Hey, poker people, it's Sky Matsuhashi, and this is the Smart Poker Study Podcast. In episode 147 last week, I discussed two specific plays that you can make against a reluctant sea better to take advantage of them, the pro bet and the float bet. It's poker study time, y'all. Thanks for listening, and thanks for sharing with some of them poker buddies out there. I really do appreciate it. And we've got three great poker questions that I think the answers to will help most everybody listening. Please visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod148. Okay, I think it's about that time. Let's get to it. Gambate! And now for our feature presentation. Alrighty, so question one today comes to us from Barry. He says, hey Sky, I need help with a major leak. Paying people off. I can't help it, but I keep proving myself right by calling when I know I'm beat, like calling an all-in with pocket jacks on a queen high flop. Do you have any advice or content you could point me towards? Thanks. Alrighty, Barry, that's a great question. Thank you so very much. And this is a problem that many of us have. And it's often like a combination of three different things going on within our brains. Number one, we don't want to believe the opponent. Number two, we're not thinking through our decision. And number three, we just don't see the signs that we're beat. So here are seven things that I recommend that you do. Number one is remind yourself to take a breath before decisions, for big decisions. Make sure you breathe, and the reason why is because doing so helps to clear your mind and it puts you back in control. The second thing that I recommend, have a reason for every bet, for every call, every race, or every fold that you make. If you know why you're doing what you're doing, you're more likely making a positive EV decision. If you think your hand is best, for example, like you said, calling pocket jacks on that queen high board, if you think that your hand is best there, maybe 50% of the time, go ahead and make that call. But if you're calling just for the quote unquote hope that you're end up that you're going to be good, uh, it's really just a bad call. Never call for hope. Call because you analyze the situation and you think you're better than them 50% of the time or greater. The third thing I want you to do is every time you find yourself at the end of a hand and you realize that you weren't thinking through your decisions, then take a critical look back and figure out why. Maybe you were scared of your pocket aces getting cracked. Maybe you were up against a donk and you just could not believe that he hit that queen and was willing to go all in versus your pocket jacks. Maybe you lost the hand before and you're just kind of going on tilt and just not thinking in general. You need to figure out what's causing your mental lapses and develop a plan to fix them. The fourth thing I recommend is create a tag, whether you're using Poker Tracker 4 or Holder Manager, create a hand tag called Gave Value. So every time you find yourself giving value in a spot where you think you should have folded, tag that hand for future study. Then, of course, in your next study session, study that hand, figure out what happened, and resolve not to make that same mistake again. The fifth thing I want you to do is part of your study sessions, and I want you to run a filter within Poker Tracker 4 for times when you called a raise on the flop and you saw a showdown. You'll probably find a huge negative win rate here. Maybe not huge, but possibly negative. I have seen as high as 750 big blinds negative uh, win rate, and that is a huge leak. These are most often times when you should have folded because, you know, if you think about yourself, Sometimes you raise as a pure bluff on the flop or on the turn or on the river, but most often it's for value. Your opponents are playing the same way. They raise for value more so than they do for bluffs. So running this filter will help you realize that, hey, when my opponent's raising, they're most likely good, so I really need to give this hand consideration before I continue versus their raise. The sixth thing I want you to do is look through your database and find the biggest losing hands that went to showdown because... Oftentimes in these big losing pots, your opponents show that they're interested in the hand three times or more. When somebody opens the pot pre-flop and then they call, that's twice they've put money in. When they call your c-bet on the flop, that's a third instance of them liking their hand. Alarm bells should be ringing at this point. When they donk lead the turn, that's number four, and that should be a huge sign that they like their hand. They probably think their hand is pretty darn good at this point. 
As you review the big losing hands with multiple actions on different streets, count the times that they show interest. And I bet by the third or fourth time that they've showed interest, you probably should have picked up on the fact that your top pair or your under pair or even like a week two pair is beat. And the seventh thing I recommend that you do is listen to podcast number 23 and read Ed Miller's book, The Course. That podcast, uh, it dealt specifically with his skill number two, which is don't pay people off. So that's a really important chapter within the book to read. And in that podcast, I discuss it if you don't have that book yet. Alrighty, on to question number two right here. This one comes from Lewis. He says, hey, Sky, I'm listening to episode 130 of the podcast, and I heard you recommend to start at 10 NL rather than 5 NL or 2 NL for cash games. It would be amazing if you could possibly reply with a few reasons why. Kind regards, Lewis. Yep, thank you very much for that question, Lewis. And I do recommend 10 NL to start over 2 NL and 5 NL. And there's a few reasons for this. Number one is with a 40 buy in minimum, which is what I recommend for cash games. At 10 NL, that's only $400. And most people can easily spare $400 to begin an online poker journey. You might even have a live cash, uh, a live cash bankroll right now of $1,000. It's only 40% of that. Take that and start playing some uh, 10 NL online. The second reason why I recommend 10 NL is that with a $2 buy-in or a $5 buy-in, how likely are you to take it seriously? With only five bucks on the line, that's basically a coffee at Starbucks. It's so easy to make weak plays and just say, well, I guess I won't buy that Starbucks tomorrow. And the third reason is the same mindset is in play for your opponents at 2NL and 5NL. So you can tend maybe, depends on the type of person you are, but you can often tend to not really care much about two bucks or five bucks on the line. Uh, And your opponents are that same way. 10NL is where people start to take things more seriously. So those are the three reasons why I think it's a great place to begin. And there's some poker pros out there like Nathan Williams, Black Rain 79 Great poker pro coach. He knows what he's talking about. Great videos, uh, great articles he puts out there. If anybody doesn't know, go visit BlackRain79.com. But um, Nathan Williams, he recommends everyone to start at 2NL because you learn some really good skills about uh, getting value from opponents, selecting great starting hands. And it's also good practice just to build that bankroll and stay within some bankroll requirements. And I think that can be helpful for some people but i think the skills necessary to be 2nl and 5nl can also be learned and worked on at 10nl so i've started learning better tournament strategy from pokernerve.com this site started back in 2014 but i just recently learned about it this year Poker Nerve specializes in providing the best tournament poker tutorials worldwide. They do this through their course called The Road to Success. This course is jammed with over 90 power-packed lessons and supplemental items. It covers everything from beginner-level topics to advanced tactics, and all of it is explained in easy-to-understand ways. The course is so intensive it takes most people several months to complete, and I'll admit that I've <laughs> I haven't even completed it yet. It's so much there. The site and the course was founded by Kelvin Aces Up Beatty. He's a professional poker player for more than 14 years now, and he has over $4 million in online earnings and 10 online triple crowns. Plus, he was once ranked the number one player in Australia by Pocket Fives, so this dude knows his MTTs. And just for my listeners, Poker Nerve is running a contest to win one of seven prizes. They're giving away one premium version of the Road to Success tournament course, three basic versions of the course, and three Poker Nerve hoodies. All you have to do is enter the contest uh, by going through my affiliate link at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash poker nerve contest. Make sure to hurry because the contest ends on July 31st, with the winners being contacted via email August 1st. On top of the contest, Poker Nerve is offering my listeners 30% off either the basic or the premium Road to Success package. Just use offer code SPS2017 when checking out. To learn more about the course, visit PokerNerve.com slash MTT dash poker dash course, or just click the link in the show notes as well. While you're there, you can also sign up for a seven-day free trial for access to the entire course. And don't forget, offer code SPS2017 for 30% off. And that site was PokerNerve.com slash MTT dash poker dash course 
And two shout outs for y'all today. Number one goes out to Kurt. He purchased my smart HUD in this past week and he's using it to rock the tables. Good luck out there, Kurt, and keep on, uh, well, keep on keeping on with exploiting them opponents. And if you want the, uh, if you want your own copy of the smart HUD, visit www.smartpokerstudy.com slash smart HUD. And one more shout out going out to Chris Sepik. He purchased the How to Study Poker webinar. And by doing so, he also received the Opponent Destruction webinar as his bonus of choice. So thank you very much, Chris. If you have any questions on either of those uh, those webinars, once you download and go through them, just send me an email. I'll be sure to help you out. So if you want to support the show like these gnarly poker peeps, visit the show notes for links to show your support. Alrighty, back to class, poker people. Our third and final question today comes to us from Josh, and he says, I think my biggest weakness or leak would be making rash decisions post-flop. I understand the skills I have learned and studied, but sometimes I just spew chips without thinking about anything but my own hand and the pot odds offered. Thank you very much, Josh. I appreciate it. So, uh, my answer to that very first question today regarding not paying people off, three of those things actually apply here as well. Remind yourself to take a breath. That's the first thing. It really is key. If you've never done that before, taking a big breath before every big decision, actually before every small decision, take a breath, assess the situation, and then act. The second thing you can do is once again, have a reason for every bet or call or raise or a fold. So if you're making those RAS decisions, you're really not thinking through them at all. You think, or maybe not even think, just suddenly it comes to your mind, I have to see bet here. So you throw out the two thirds pot C bet. Damn it, he called, I have to see bet again because hey, I got a double barrel and you're not even considering your opponent's range and board interaction. So you throw out the barrel again. You aren't really having a good reason for your betting in this case. And if you're calling down with an under pair or top pair or something, you're possibly not even assessing, hey, my opponent has plenty of sets in his range. The flop came down six, seven, eight, and he just called me pre-flop. Well, sixes, sevens, eights, eight, nine, nine, ten for a made straight, six, seven, two pairs in his range. Jeez, he has so many ways to hit this flop. Maybe I shouldn't be calling with my pocket jacks, you know, whatever the case might be. So have a reason for every bet or play that you make. And the third thing that you must do is this is all a part of assessing your game and being honest with yourself. Every time you find yourself at the end of a hand, and you realize that you weren't thinking through those decisions, tag that hand, mark that hand, whatever the case is, but you've got to learn from your mistakes. Accept your mistakes. Accept that you're thinking, mm, maybe not thinking, you're acting rashly, and you need to work on that aspect of your game. You need to figure out what's causing those mental lapses and develop a plan to fix them. And the fourth thing, you know, before I mentioned uh, creating that Poker Tracker 4 hand tag called Gave Value, now you can create another tag called Unthinking and tag every single hand where you found you played only your cards and the board. This will help you study and get to the bottom of these issues, these mental issues that you have. And speaking of mental issues, the fifth thing that I can recommend is that you read Peak Poker Performance by Dr. Trisha Carter. This whole book is about keeping you in your A-game mindset and helping you figure out what is causing these mental lapses. You can find a link to the book in the show notes, or of course, just go to Amazon. Peak Poker Performance is the name of the book by Dr. Trisha Cardner. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Create specific hand tags that are relevant to any weaknesses you may have. In today's episode, I talk about an unthinking tag and a gave value tag. Recognizing you've got an issue is the first step to fixing it. So admit to yourself that you have a problem. Tag all the relevant hands as you play them and resolve to study and learn from each of them. Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Now get it on. Thank you so much for listening today and make sure you check out Poker Nerve and sign up for their contest by visiting www.smartpokerstudy.com slash poker nerve 
contest. And you can just learn more about the Road to Success tournament course by visiting pokernerve.com slash mtt dash poker dash course. And if you decide to purchase or just sign up for that seven-day free trial, don't forget to use offer code SPS2017 for 30% off and to support the show. Cool beans, if you can type the words Smart Poker Study, you can find me on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now Anchor. You can also hear the podcast on your Amazon Echo device. Just tell it to play the Smart Poker Study podcast on TuneIn. Or, of course, you can contact me via email, sky at smartpokerstudy.com. All righty, poker peeps. Next week in episode 149, I'll begin a four-part series on hand reading, which is the ninth minimum effective dose. Everything we've learned so far has been building to this one, so don't miss it. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing this show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is helping us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. I want a lot of help. I want the world.